Hello and welcome to Alfons Zeilleis. My name is Johanna Nagelsbach. I am the grandniece of the artist Alfons Zeilleis. How much money do you need per month for your studies today? How much money do you need for living, eating and fun? We will see in this video how much money students needed at the beginning of the 20th century and how they lived. In 1902, there were about 53,000 students in the German Empire. Their number increased in percentage terms faster than the population. Theology was the subject for social advancement. Only 4% of the fathers of theology students had already been academics. Theology had by far the most scholarships. There were also scholarships for the Nuremberg School of Arts and Crafts. For example, the newspaper Allgemeine Zeitung of September 10th, 1897 reported 19 school scholarships of 360 marks, each and one support of 180 marks. Scholarships with a total value of 7,020 marks. In order to put this value in relation to the costs of studying, we compare the amount with a list by Martin Bierstoch on students of Tübingen in the Empire. For the year 1905, Martin Bierstoch gives the monthly living costs of a student as follows. Room rent 25 to 30 marks. Breakfast 6 to 7 marks. Lunch 37 to 45 marks. Dinner 15 to 18 marks. Light heating 10 marks. Stationery 5 marks. Beer, theater, cigars or similar 15 to 20 marks, plus college fees, books, clothing. This resulted in a monthly need of about 200 marks. The scholarships were by no means sufficient. During the semester breaks, the students were at home and incurred considerably lower costs there. Do you notice how expensive food was at that time compared to the room rent? It's about twice the rent. The vast majority of students came from middle-class families and were correspondingly conservative. Many students at that time were members of student fraternities. There were political, non-political, confessional and from the beginning of women's studies in about 1908, gender-specific fraternities. Depending on the source, one-third to two-thirds of the students were organized in a fraternity. Alfons Zeilleis is not known to have been a member of a fraternity. So, how did a student live? Students belonged to the middle or upper class and dressed accordingly. Men wore suits and ties. Among fellow students, one addressed each other by family names, as a matter of principle. This culture existed in some circles until well after the Second World War. Students at that time usually lived in private rooms. In the Allgemeine Zeitung of 13th of September 1906, a Bavarian educator wrote how rooms for students should be. Rooms for students must be dry, ventilated and heated, and in no case moldy. If the window faces the courtyard, there must be no privy, no manure pile and no view of suit blackened walls of rear buildings. He writes. It is not uncommon to reach student rooms, especially in old houses, only through long, dark corridors, all made of wood, the windows barred. If a fire were to break out there at night, the room should have an entrance and not be accessible only through a bedroom of the family. The housekeepers should sweep and mop the floor of the rented room daily, dust and air it, please, in the absence of the students. In winter, heating is to be 12 to 17 degrees Celsius. Two students should not share one bed. Who of you would like to swap with a student of that time and sit in winter in a 12 degrees Celsius cold room with a view through a barred window into a narrow courtyard with a stinking manure pile in the middle, which can only be reached through the host family's bedroom and which is cleaned by the host family in your absence with absolute violation of privacy. 
Thank you very much for accompanying Alphonse Zeilais during his first steps in student life. In the next video, we'll have a look at the first artworks of Alphonse Zeilais and at the subjects he took during his studies. I look forward to seeing you then!